Hello again, Ian Stokey with Mastermind Games. Back with another Transformers Deep Cuts video, this time Optimus Prime, heroic leader of the Autobots. References again are at the Transformers Identification and Prize Guide by Marco Romo. Oh. Here are our references on this one. Be a lot of metallic colors here. The biggest difference between uh, this and the uh, cartoon is uh, Prime has yellow eyes and grayish windshields. Second reference is Transformers Legacy by IDW. Should be up the front here, and there he is. That's a better depiction of the uh, Justice again. Better depiction. So a lot of steel, a bright red. It's a very shiny book. So let's get that up. It's quite a bit darker than it's typically associated with them. I'm going to tweak my lights a little bit here. Get that kind of reset so I don't... Dang it. Try that again. Alright, I think that's uh, going to get it. Maybe not. Alright. Enjoy the technical difficulty. Strike again. One more time. Oh, nuts. Alright, I'm just going to roll with it at this point. So, I'm going to start with the base here. And Phoenix Red 09005. Um, yeah. No, I used Fire Red. I think I lost track of what Red I used. No, I'm not going to do the base yet. I'm getting confused. Settle down. Brilliant Blue 09116. So, one thing about the package, uh, no surprises on this one. It's just showing Bumblebee and Megatron, which are already part of this wave. So, Brilliant Blue 09116. I think they might have mis made a mistake on Prime's package, because Starscream shows two characters that might hypothetically be coming and all the others show one so just a bit of speculation this is a, not too consequential though now we got just clearing my paint bottle here and this is brilliant blue Thing with uh, just enough water, to using just enough water to thin the paint, uh, so just enough to keep the brush moist but not overly wet. And I will touch up uh, these mist parts as we go along. Unlike Bumblebee and Starscream, there aren't really any variants to Optimus Prime. Or rather, not any palette swaps unless you count Ultra Magnus, which the toy did use an Optimus Prime figure with a trailer that converted into armor that fitted over him to give the iconic Ultra Magnus. I'm not too keen on a palette swap on a palette swapped Nemesis Prime. That character came much later, but. There was a palette swap version of Optimus Prime that appeared in the first issue of the Marvel comic book. That's a possibility, but we'll just see. I'm not too keen on uh, doing any uh, repaints outside of maybe some seekers. We'll just see what happens with uh, some characters getting new sculpts. But. Oh boy, I'm dropping frames again, so I'm just going to finish this up and call it good.
So Optimus Prime, I believe the Autobot was um, all right. In the cartoon, the original Optimus Prime was once a laborer named Orion Pax that was upgraded into Optimus Prime by uh, Alpha Trion after Megatron came into being and started uh, another war. He would leave the Autobots up until the movie where he would die at the hands of Megatron. Then in season three, he would be resurrected by the Quintessons, who had apparently created the Transformers in the first place as a uh, sort of trap to lead them, sort of a zombie, I suppose, to lead the Autobots into a death trap, but Prime would remember himself and sacrifice himself again to save them and get revived by the Quintessons at the end of Season 3 to stave off a uh, plague that was basically a big, a literal rage virus. Comics. Oh, well. I'm going to get this finished up since I'm having so many problems with my camera right now and come to the comics in a minute when I hit the next color. It's just, I'm probably going to have to put another coat on this because some areas are looking a bit thin. Kind of an awkward grip on his torso here. Like get his legs, but well, that's a start. I got a minute. All right, next, Fire Red zero nine zero zero four. says go on torso and arms and this is the same red I used on star screen works well for both it's just a nice bright red or it will be when I'm done with it let that get a little thick right there on accident so just thin that out keeping the brush moist but not overly wet Prime actually has a pretty simple color scheme. So, <sighs> getting into what happened to him in the comic books. Originally, Transformers, the Marvel comic, was supposed to be a four issue limited series, but it was renewed beyond that. Issue four ended with Shockwave seizing control of the Decepticons and leaving all of the Autobots critically injured and captured, with the exception of Ratchet, who was dealing with something else. During this time, Prime would uh, be, his head would be separated from his body, and Shockwave would be using the creation matrix, which at the time was just a computer program, but later on would be changed to the matrix of leadership, so essentially, they are both the same thing. They're just trying to make the comics conform to the cartoon a little more. So something about, so a pretty substantial retcon there. But eventually, Optimus would be rescued by Buster Witwicky, who in the comics largely has the role of Spike. But Spike would come in later anyway. And after being reunited with his body, Prime would actually die for the first time when he and Megatron, who had regained leadership of the Decepticons at this point, were fighting for a power generator at a... Huh, what's the word? At a tech company. He and Megatron would fight in a 
video game generated world at the suggestion of one of this company's programmers, Ethan Zachary, as a way to fight it out without risking having the generator destroyed. And Megatron would insist that both he and Optimus would have their bodies laced with explosives and the loser of their game would die in the real world. Now, well, as that issue drew to a close, Prime would win, Megatron would cheat to come back, and Prime would win again, but sacrificing some of the game's virtual inhabitants in the process. And as he violated his ethical code, he voluntarily forfeited the game and his life. He would, but um, Ethan Zachary would save Optimus Prime's mind on a old four-inch floppy disk, and it would be used to revive him later on on the planet Nebulos, where he would be binary bonded to their chief scientist High Q, who would serve as his engine. And this is the only origin for Power Master Optimus Prime, as he did not appear in the cartoon. Not the American version, anyway. But he would die again while force feeding the creation matrix to Unicron to destroy the planet devouring Titan. But High Q, the Nebulan scientist serving as his engine, would basically evolve into a new Optimus Prime not long after that. And Optimus resurrected for the second time would come back, would uh, revive the last Autobot created by Primus in the heart of Cybertron and achieve victory over the Decepticons as the last Autobot revived and resurrected all of the fallen Autobots who had died over the course of the series. So yeah, I find the... I didn't have the cartoon growing up and didn't even see all the episodes until it hit DVD a few, several, about a decade ago. But I did have many of the comics, and now those are available reprinted as well. And that's a pretty nice solid coat, so I'm going to let that dry. Wrap up base coats when I come back. Alright, finishing up base coats. I'm going to start with Stormy Gray, 09088. And this is just going on his iconic laser rifle. I find that dark gray actually looks a lot better than pure black, but that's a personal opinion. Not sure what, if anything, I'm going to pick out an additional lighting effects, but I'll figure that out when I get that far. Definitely might not hurt to make it look a little more. Oh, that's what I'm looking for. Impressive. Plate mail metal. I need some more of that later on. Alright, this is metallic silver. Hitting the face and the face plate.
trying to get his neck as best I can without hitting the red, so I might have to do some touch-ups on that. That's alright. Get the grill of the truck in his midsection. And that's one thing about G1 Transformers, the there was an abundance of chrome, especially early on. work for me. Okay. Go ahead and get the waist and legs now. Keeping the brush moist but not overly wet. that popped in my head actually months ago before I even knew these were coming out was what would be really cool would be a live action Transformers movie with old school 80s stop motion for the Autobots and Decepticons robot modes that is something to think about In the cartoon, a lot of the chrome was changed to gray. As it's seemingly difficult to do metallic colors on an animation cell. But... They seem to still use it in the comic. on the side, which I don't know a whole lot about real-world cars, but I think they have something to do with the braking system, but I'm not certain. And I, I suppose one other interesting thing about the- oh boy, I just sprayed. Gotta fix that while I have a chance. One interesting thing about the comic book is they showed a Cybertronian alt mode for Optimus Prime in the first issue as a combat vehicle with his rifle appearing prominently on the top. Need to end that up before it solidifies anymore. Okay. Well, that's base coats. So, once that completely dries, I can start shading. Oh, wait. One aspect I almost completely forgot about. That's this part of his head. That's got it. That's got it. Okay, back in a bit. Okay, time to shade. But before that, before I forget again, Phoenix Red 09005. Get the base started. So, the model itself is pre primed. The base is not black plastic, so I primed it with a white spray on primer. Get a nice solid coat of this. Going for that grid pattern that was on the card back and was grids like that were just analogous with the 80s. 
Now we're everywhere. later. Matt Black. Let's start with the rifle. It's about empty. No oh boy. one part water. Well, in the case of dark colors like black, you actually need two to three parts water to one part paint. Otherwise it muddies things up too much. But it's going over the entirety of the rifle. It's five minutes long in between the fingers. That'll work. Making sure to get a nice solid coat here. Okay. And black and steel 09205. First, one part water, one part paint. Blot that out a bit. I want it on the steel, not on any other color. And this will pool in the recessed areas. Make them appear darker and combined with the highlight will make the highest areas appear lighter. To help give more depth. Once that dries completely, I can uh, move on. So just let it rest a bit. Okay. Red or look blue, 0915. I need to do this one next because there's every chance that this is going to drip down onto the red. It'll be easier to patch up the red. If I do that, 
start on the face first. Go around the sides of the head. Then the hands. Or make bad noises again. And it's dropping the frames. And my. Alright, fine. I am just gonna wrap this up real quick. Camera's getting buggy. So just. I'm going to wrap this up real quick and get it done. Okay, let that dry and then I can get the red. I'll finish up that base off camera while I'm at it. Okay, last lighting effect. Or shade, sorry, vampire red. Lighting effects are next. Getting a little tired. section at a time here. Trying to keep it controlled so it doesn't drip onto the uh, silver on the waist. Being careful around the wrist so I get the uh, forearm and not the hand.
because I'm using the entirety of the brush, not just the tip. Try not to touch the gum, but come as close as I can. All right. Once that dries, I can prep the lighting effects and go from there. Okay. All right, things are dry. Matte white to prep for lighting effects. So I need a little more silver on that uh, vein on his head, though. So let's do that real quick. The uh, black and steel there, just a little dot to handle that. That won't get in the way of the lighting effects. Carefully filling in the eyes. Got the lights on us. Top of the cap there, this. The windows. some of these panels out. Barrel of the gun. Why not? And... That's pretty good. Those will be my lighting effects. And I'll also take the base, start doing the grid. Things got out of hand on star screams and just got kind of ugly, so let's see if I can improve this time. is a little touchy right now, so. Let that dry and do the lighting effects and the other half of the grid. Alright, lighting effects. Where do I want to start? 
11 yellow, 09009, which is almost empty. So for lighting effects, in with two to three parts water to one part paint, the real trick is leaving some of the light to show. And I'm going to do it on these sections to differentiate them from his eyes. I did decide to pick that one out after all at the end. Fire orange 09006. There we go. My brush goes for a roll. Sun yellow zero nine zero zero eight. up the grid. So kind of twitchy though. This all dries up, I can highlight and wrap up. Alright, time to highlight. I did add another layer of gray to the windshields, make us have a little more. So I'm going to start with true silver 09207. Great paint, no water, ragged feather brush, and maybe a little slime in that to get the head. 
rub most of the paint out on a paper towel till it looks like there's nothing left. Get that out of there. And lightly dust the area to be affected. I just realized I forgot to get the smoke stacks when I did the lighting. All right, I can fix that. I should be able to fix that now without uh, screwing anything up too. any raised edges. So just kind of burnishing it. Actually there's only four colors to the highlight here. Next is going to be I think cyan blue 09117. This will go actually pretty quickly. Even with the inevitable uh, patchwork I'm going to have to do on the smokestacks. Just using a piece of wire to clear my nozzle there. I'm not talking hundreds of frames a second. It's a nice iconic looking blue frog in this prime. This can be a bit subtle, but subtle actually works really well for me. Use your own painting style if you, you know, you get the gist of what I'm trying to say. Phoenix Red 09005. Oh boy, now I'm certain about frames. Ah, that sucks. And I bumped my camp at some point. It's okay. It's okay.
there is a nice bright red. And it was about dead on for an iconic Optimus. Uniform gray. That is not uniform gray. That one is. Take a little fire orange again, zero nine zero zero six. And just do a little dot of light in each the tip of each smokestack. All right, now. Once that's completely dry, I can glue him to his base and apply uh, water slide decals. So, back in a minute. And I've broken a bunch of frames again. Okay, time to add some water slide decals. So, this should end up being a clear Autobot insignia, but I think it's just barely going to fit, so I have to trim it very very closely so just super carefully tying up with scissors and i'm actually gonna have the same problem on megatron but we'll come to that when we come to it so let's just try a little uh well i think this will fit pretty much exactly once i apply it so First, we're going to let this sink for about 30 seconds. So, so just water in. Goodness is it's coming off. Okay, I've got it. Careful, careful, careful. Okay, tap that down, move it around. Get in the position I want it in. And light the towel. With the excess, that is not bad. Not bad at all. So exactly enough room to fit. Yay. Get that set aside. Get in the base, and now taking a thick cyanoacrylate super glue, which I have just now dropped. sense. Being very careful not to touch the icon on the shoulder.
just let that set for a little bit. Is it Optimus Prime from Transformers Deep Cuts? One more of these, and that is, of course, Prime's Nemesis. So, until then, I am Ian Stuckey with Mass for Mind Games, signing out. <laughs>